Welcome to my secret math tutor. For this video, I want to talk about the vocabulary of radical functions. So maybe one good example of radical function is like this one that I've written below. And a good way that you can recognize a radical function is that you'll find some sort of radical in there, also sometimes called the root. Now here's some parts of your radical that you want to know about. All radicals have an index written out front. And there's also the part underneath the radical, all of this stuff, we'll call that the radicand. Now when you put all of those parts together, you know, this entire thing right here, all of this makes up our radical expression. And as long as we have a radical expression, say, in a function or in, any, in an equation, uh, then we can call it a radical function or a radical equation. Uh, here's some other things that you want to know about these radicals. To keep things nice and simple, uh, if we have a radical with an index of 2, then most of the time we just call these square roots. And you've probably heard that many different times, like when you're looking for the square root of 25 or something, that just means the index is 2. Uh, also when we do something like uh, a radical with an index of 2, we often leave off that index. Technically we could put it in there, but we usually leave it off. Roots with an index of 3 are called cubed roots. So something like maybe the cubed root of 27. And even though that, that one is also very common, that one must have the 3 in there. That way we don't accidentally confuse it with the square roots. Now in addition to these other common names for roots, uh, here's a few more things. If you have a root with an even index, then you want to make sure that you have a positive radicand to avoid imaginary numbers. Now what am I talking about there? Well, let me show you. Uh, so suppose I'm looking at the fourth root of 16. You know, the numbers in the radicand, these guys right underneath it, uh, we hope that they're either zero or some sort of positive number. That way I can actually talk about what their result is. If we do have, say, a negative underneath our radicand, I mean underneath our radical, uh, then it's not that we can't do this, but it will produce, say, imaginary numbers. And most of the time we're trying to avoid those imaginary numbers. Now on the flip side, when you start working with, say, odd indexes, say cubed roots or even the fifth root of something, then in the radicand you can have both positive and negative numbers. So something like the cubed root of 27, that'd give you 3. And you can also do something like the cubed root of negative 8. That'd equal a negative 2. So both those are allowed. Now, in some of my other videos, we'll actually go through the process of trying to solve these different radicals, uh, but that's just the few terms that you'll hear me use as I'm going through those. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.